Hey guys, um, it's me and it's Monday, um, so just a disclaimer, if you hear something in the background, it's just, um, um, the oven, the oven fan, so ignore it, hopefully you don't hear it, but, um, if you do, that's what it is. Well, today is the second last quote of the day because Christmas Eve is next week and that will be our last day. Um, I'm amazed at how close to my goal I got. Now I'm at 409 reads. I started at 212 reads. So that's one, so that's 200 plus more reads. And then I thought, and even though, even if I don't reach my goal in the next week, that is so awesome. So thank you to all my fans. Thank you to all my family. Thank you to all my friends. Just for your support and my church brothers and sisters and um, just everyone who supported me, strangers on YouTube who see me. And I wanted to say a big thank you. So the quote I'm going to use today is um, from my novel, of course. It's when um, Florence and Clayton are just talking in the kitchen about their lives and whatever. At the very beginning, at in the um, at the very beginning of the novel, not very beginning, but I think mid beginning of the novel uh, when they when they meet up again and when things are when they're getting to know each other again and she says something very interesting it's a short quote but an interesting one She says this, she said, it's scary, it's scary when dysfunction becomes so normal that a person doesn't know what normal is anymore. Um, I, I think this quote is very interesting because sometimes we can live in something for so long we kind of normalize and actualize it when it's not normal at all um when god wants more for us and sometimes we don't think uh we deserve anything more uh take for an example a woman that's being a being abused by her husband um she might think okay he won't do it again he's a nice guy but when he does it again, she might make excuses and excuses, excuses. And that's why the Lord calls us to come out of dysfunction into his functionality. There are so many people in church and out of it living lives that are just, they're not functional. They're just scattered and they're just doing their own thing. The Lord wants us to come into alignment with his purpose. And sometimes we've lived with something for so long, we begin to normalize it. And the way you could tell, like they'll, they'll be like, how do you know if some people will be like, um, how do you know if something is normal? How do you know if I'm living uh, a normal life? What does that look like? Um, and some people say you can't define normal. What is that? But I tend to think, I tend to measure normal um, by the word of God. Um, 
if it's if it's in the word of God and God says you should have it, then it's normal. If it's not and it's outside of the word of God, then it isn't normal. Um, I I think if we start, I I think what becomes more scary than than functioning in your dysfunction is that when you think that this function is okay, when you make allowances and laws for that dysfunction being okay, um, for living outside of the Word of God. And that's where our society is today. Like, we, we seem to be calling whatever was in the Word of God whatever was in the Bible, we're, we're seeming to be calling it wrong, and we seem to be called whatever is not in the Bible, um, not something that, that God deems appropriate, we seem to be calling it right. So I think we need to come out of that and understand that the work as Christians, um, the word of God is our measuring stick, not the not the not the world and how the world deems things. Because if you measure something by how the world deems things, you'll be changing your mind every day. Because if you take the foods we eat, you'll say um, there are always studies coming out with. with this food is wrong and this food is right and no they actually the other way around this food is wrong and this food is right so if you if you take your standards from the world standards it's like you don't have any standards because the world standards say if it feels good do it Go with your heart. Go with it. And that's why we need to measure our function or dysfunction by the Word of God. And we need to ask the Lord, show me where I need work. Show me where I'm um, not functioning or dysfunctional. And He will. And He will even bring people alongside you to help you along that road don't don't normalize something that you know is not in the word of god and not right because i was thinking about this um um i was thinking about this um yesterday uh, a person can be happy but not in God's purpose. You could live a perfectly happy life and not be in the purpose of God for your life. And that's what's scary. Happiness doesn't mean you're living in purpose. You could live co very contrary to the word of God and be happy. God doesn't measure, um, God doesn't think about happiness. He wants us to be content. He wants us to be joyful. He doesn't want us to just be happy because I've heard it said before that happiness is a feeling and joy is a state of being. Uh, you can tweet that if you want. Um, I'll say it again. Happiness is a feeling. Joy is a state of being. And I think that to have, you can have a happy life, but not a, a God-ordained, purposeful life. I heard some celebrities say, they, um, the interviewer asked them if they were happy. And they said, yes, I'm happy. I'm the happiest I've ever been. But I, I, 
I, I sat there in front of the TV and wondered, you're happy, but are you living in purpose? Or are you living to the extent of purpose that God wants you to live on? Um, what I mean by that is, okay, I could be a writer and just write pamphlets, um, just write little like blurbs for a newspaper and whatever. I operate where God wants me to write novels or plays or movies. That kind of... And either way, I'm a writer, but the Lord wants me to write plays or movies, and I'm just plays, movies, or books, I'm right, and then I'm writing just little pamphlet things. So I'm kind of living in purpose, but not to the extent that God wants me to live in. And I'm functioning and I have happiness, but not to the extent that God wants me to live in. God wants everyone to not just be happy, to have purpose, to have joy, to have peace in their lives. And although struggling is part of the equation, a struggling is part of the what makes you a better person. He doesn't want you to live in struggle. Having struggling moments is necessary, but living in co constantly living with struggle, how it, how it is not the the will of God for your life. Struggling for seasons in and out perfects you, but constantly living in struggle, constantly living below what God has for you is not God's plan for you. He wants you to live the optimum life that he has for you. And everybody's optimum life is different. My optimum life may be um, movies and TV and novels. Um, but your optimum life may be to be a mom. It doesn't have to be success. It doesn't have to be a big thing. Your optimum life is to live in the purpose that God has for you. That's what your optimum life is. And to stay in your lane and to do, to, to, be, to be your best self in that purpose. I went so much on a tangent here. I'll see you next week, guys, for our last quote. Bye.